Hello and welcome. This is a continuation of the previous section. In this section, we will write code to describe the model architecture. Model architecture is a fancy way of saying which functions will the model run when it is executing, or alternatively, what algorithm will our model use to compute its answers. A model is a function with learnable parameters that maps an input to an output. The optimal parameters are obtained by training the model on the data. If the model is well trained, it provides an accurate mapping from the input to the desired output. In machine learning, we define an architecture or an algorithm and let the training process learn the parameters of that algorithm. In TensorFlow.js, there are two ways of creating a machine learning model. The first one is by using the Layers API, where you build a model using layers, while the second one, you use the Core API with low-level ops, such as tf.add, among others. The most common type of model is the sequential model, which is a linear stack of layers. We will create a sequential model using the add method in this section and then evaluate whether it is working properly. Now let's start developing the model. We need to comment on this first. We don't need it anymore. And uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is create the model and then define the input shape. So model, we said we are going to use sequential model so uh, tensorflow dot sequential and uh, the input shape we have image width which is 28 and we also have image height also 28 and the color which we are going to call image channels is only one color which is grayscale after this we are going to now create the first layer of a convolutional neural network uh, and in this case it means we also have to uh, combine the model define the input shape and then put some parameters that will help in the convolution operation that takes place in this layer. So, of course, the first thing is take the model. Then uh, we said we are going to use dot add method. Then um, TensorFlow, we add layers. And we are going to use a conv2d. Let's create some space here. We first need to, to define the input shape input shape so we are going to define the shape of the data that will flow into the first layer of the model in this case our means examples are 28 by 28 pixels black and white images so image width 28 image height 28 and image channels this is the conical format for the image data the image width is the row the image height is the column while the image channel is the depth so here we want to configure a shape of 28 by 28 by 1 28 rows and columns for the number of pixels in each dimension and a depth of one because our images have only one color channel so the next thing is the channel size and we are going to give it five so we are setting channel size of five and this is the sliding convolutional filter windows to be applied to the input data which specifies a square of five by five convolutional window if you want to learn more about this uh, you can get into the details about these parameters but for now we are just going to uh, highlight briefly on what they mean let's go to the next parameter which is filters and filters we are going to give eight filters these are the number of filter windows of the size kennel size 
to apply to the input data. The other one will be strides. We are going to give just one stride. A stride is a step size of the sliding window. That is how many pixels the filter will shift each time it moves over the image. Here we specify a stride of 1 which means the filter will slide over the image in steps of 1 pixel. The other one is activation function. LELU is the activation function that we will apply to the data after the convolution is complete. And this is a very common activation function for the machine learning model. Then finally we are going to define the kernel initializer. And kernel initializer is the method to use for randomly initializing the model weights, which is very important to training dynamics. We're going to use variance keying here, which is a good choice for our objective. Up to there, we have created our first layer of the model. We're going to add another layer here, and this layer will be a max pooling layer, which will act as a sort of downsampling using max values in a region instead of averaging. So uh, in the same model, model.add tensorflow.layers.maxpooling2d, then we need to define the first thing, which is pool size. So let's put uh, here pool size of 2 by 2. Then we are going to put strides also of 2 by 2. Strides are also integers or tuple of 2 integers or none stride values. And this specifies how far the pooling window moves for each pooling step. If none is used, it will default to the value in the pool size. Once in a while you see padding and sometimes also data format. But in this case, you're not going to use any of the two. And I've seen we forgot to put a V here. So this should be conv2d. We are going to duplicate this layer. So we just copy and paste it down here. And then save. Instead of having eight filters, in this case, we are going to have 16 filters. So we double the number of filters. We're going to copy also this max pooling layer as it is down here. And we are not going to change anything in this case. After this process, now we need to flatten the output from the 2D filters into a 1 d vector to prepare it for input into our last layer this is a common practice when feeding higher dimensional data to a final classification output layer so to flatten we just need to do model dot add tf dot layers In this case you're going to add flatten Then after this, we are going to create our last layer, which is a dense layer. And this layer will have 10 output units, one for each digit. That is 0 to 9. That is the digits that we, the model will be predicting. Let's do this. We do model dot add. Then into bracket, then double carry braces. Uh, we are going to define units here and uh, units we're going to use number underscore output number output classes then we're going to use uh, something we call kernel initializer and we're going to use variance scaling then we're going to also use activation And when we are preparing data for the output layer, we use softmax. For us to use this, we need to define it here. So const number output classes. 
we are using 10. The last step that you are going to have is to choose an optimizer and to do this we first need to define it const optimizer and we are going to use tensorflow.train dot we are going to use an optimizer called adam then model dot compile uh, the optimizer which is optimizer which is adam loss we are going to use categorical cross entropy entropy then there is matrix and matrix we are going to use accuracy i think that should be okay after doing all this we need to return the model return model we are going to change this button from get model to show model so show model and we are going to create a class called show model down after the get model class get model class is this one we're going to create a class here called show model because we want to view the model that we have created to find out whether it's working properly and to achieve this we need to uh, do this const model equals this dot get model then we can use a uh, tensorflow visor so t f this uh, tf this dot show dot model summary uh, then we need to define the name which is model architecture and the model here then we can save let's run this and see whether we have made any mistakes so go to console run npm run serve enter the process is completed let's open a browser we see whether this is working there's an error somewhere Let's see what the error is all about. Is it one or just many errors? I don't know whether there is anyone else who was able to see that we missed an S here. It's tf.layers. There's also tf.layers here. I think that should be it. Let's save. Let's try again and see whether this now works. You should be able to see your model displayed on the right side of the browser using TensorFlow Visor. Thank you for watching this video. It was a long one, but it was worth it. I didn't want to split it into two sections. I hope you have enjoyed the video and uh, let us catch up in the next video where we are now going to train our model to see whether it's going to achieve our objective. If you are new to this channel, please remember to subscribe. In case you have any question about uh, this particular video, you can put the question in the comment section or you can send direct messages to me.